southwest corner of South Vietnam, nestled among 4,000 foot high mountains, steep ravines, and thick jungle foliage, rests the small valley of Khe San. At this time in history, it is calm and peaceful. But from January 21st to March 31st, 1968, it was the scene of one of the most bitterly fought and highly publicized battles of the Vietnam War. For 70 days and nights, a determined group of 6,000 Marines and Allied troops held out against a besieging force of 20,000 North Vietnamese. Was Khe San worth it? Why did the U.S. military command feel it necessary to defend this outpost? This is its story. Many times I'm asked what part I think Quezon will play in the history of our country. And it's almost impossible for me to evaluate it since I was so close to the situation. However, I can tell you a little bit about it, and perhaps the place we should start is with an orientation of its location and some of the features around it. Quezon, as you know, is located 8 to 10 miles from the Sapone River, which is the boundary between Laos and South Vietnam. It's south of the demilitarized zone and has around it uh, certain hill masses which controls some of the infiltration routes coming down in this general area. And of course, uh, Route 9, basically the only road in this area, runs from the Laotian border, continues on through and goes almost to the coast uh, of uh, Vietnam. In about April of uh, 1967, uh, the battalion surprised an enemy element on this particular hill mass. And eventually it resulted in the Marines seizing Hill 861, 881 South, and 881 North. Uh, after these had been seized, it was determined that a small unit should be placed on Hill 950 in this general area here. So that uh, when August of 1967 rolled around uh, and I took over the base, I found myself with the uh, troops on 881 South, 861, and 950. In the summer of 1967, the Battle of Quezon was still many months away, but units of the U.S. Navy Seabees are already at work on the airstrip that will provide the only link with the outside, while the Marines are busy digging trenches and building bunkers. The weeks that follow are relatively quiet, Marine units continue their patrol operations with very little enemy action. In December of 1967, intelligence sources indicate the start of an enemy buildup. Two North Vietnamese divisions are assembling in the deep areas around the base. The communists could be preparing for a major assault. If the base is to be defended, it will have to be reinforced. The decision is made by General William C. Westmoreland, top commander of U.S. forces in Vietnam. The Marines will stay and fight. He is supported by the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Quezon was an important outpost. If the enemy had taken this outpost, I think the province of Quang Tri and the DMZ area would have been in jeopardy. The enemy had planned to take it as part of his Tet Offensive. At the same time, he had planned to over on Quang Tri City, seize and uh, hold way and to roll up our defenses south of the demilitarized zone. If he could have seized that uh, plateau, he could have run trucks with ammunition, logistics, and even conventional artillery into the Quezon Plateau, and uh, certain of our installations further to the east could have been made untenable. Now, we saw the enemy building up his forces in order to siege and eventually overrun Quezon, as he did Den Ben Phu in 1954. The weather was very poor. In October, we had only one battalion there. In November, we increased it to uh, two battalions. 
December we kept two battalions there, but in uh, January we reinforced it with two more battalions, all Marines. We then put a Ranger battalion in there. I wanted to put into case on enough troops that I thought could hold it against ground attack. But I didn't want to put more troops in there than, than we could supply by air. Kaysan and the NBN Pool. The comparison was natural. In August of 1954, French paratroops had moved into the Viet Minh stronghold, then a part of French Indochina, located in North Vietnam. Bringing in heavy artillery, tanks, and equipment, they prepared for the communists' attack led by the North Vietnamese general, Ho Nguyen Giang. But the French found themselves outmanned and outfought. They were surrounded, cut off from their source of supplies and reinforcements by a superior artillery, crippled by a lack of air power, and crushed relentlessly in Jap's powerful nutcracker. The end was inevitable. The French were overrun, forced to capitulate. The defeat brought an end to the Indochina War. Two months later, the armistice agreement was signed at Geneva. Vietnam was partitioned, Laos and Cambodia neutralized. French influence in Southeast Asia collapsed. The Russian communists were quick to congratulate the victors, Ho Chi Minh and his brilliant General Jiang. Now, 15 years later, the same General Jiang is determined to repeat his victory at Khe San. By January 1968, the stage was set. Inside the one mile by one half mile perimeter of the Marine garrison were 6,000 U.S. Marines, a battalion of South Vietnamese Rangers, and a handful of Air Force and CB support troops. Burrowed in bunkers and hidden under the triple canopied foliage that covered the surrounding slopes was the largest and best equipped force ever mustered by the enemy, 20,000 North Vietnamese Army troops. On the 19th of uh, January, there was a recon patrol which had gone out in this general area uh, north of Hill 881 North and uh, ran into considerable trouble and it, uh, it really developed into uh, quite a tense situation. But eventually we were able to uh, get them out and brought them back to Hill 881 South. So the next day uh, it was decided that we should go out and clean up this enemy force which had uh, evidently come in the 881 North area. So we sent one of the companies from 81 South towards 81 North, and they uh, banged head-on into what uh, evidently was a NVA battalion. 